Have you gotten the peer-reviewed article assignment yet? If not, you probably will at some point in college. Why do profs ask you to find these articles? What's the big deal with peer review? What is peer review anyway? And why is it so important? As you know, professors and researchers at colleges and universities are up to a lot more than teaching students. They're also really busy creating new knowledge. They create this new knowledge by studying what people already know and then experimenting to find out more. This knowledge might be a new way of thinking about a problem or understanding a poem, understanding how the human body works, or the nature of the physical world itself. So what's all this got to do with peer-reviewed articles? Well, over time, let's say the past 250 years or so, peer-reviewed articles have become a standard way to keep track of new knowledge being produced. Peer-reviewed articles are different from other types of writing because they're scrutinized by expert scholars. But before we get into that, first, let's take a look at how new knowledge is often produced. Say you're a researcher, like your prof, and you have an idea for a research study. To carry out the study, you need some money, so often you apply for a grant, but not always. If your idea is good, you get the money and carry out your research. Then you collect the results, analyze it, and then explain what it all means. At this point, you likely attend some conference or meeting that's interested in your new knowledge, and there you share some of your results and get some feedback, informally. Then you take what you have and write it up as a draft article, also called a manuscript, which you then submit to a journal publisher. At the publishers, an editor will take a look at your submission, and if they think it is a right fit for the journal, they send a copy of your submission to a group of experts to judge your work. And this is where peer review happens. These experts are considered your peers because they're studying similar things as you, and hence the term peer review. They are also sometimes called referees, and so peer-reviewed articles are also called refereed articles. But these peers are considered experts because they've already contributed a lot of new knowledge themselves, and they've established a good reputation and tend to stay up to date on what's going on in their field. In this peer review process, they look at your submission and ask questions like, what is this new knowledge about? Is it interesting? Is it significant? What methods did you use to come up with it? Do you make sense? Are you logical? And most importantly, has this knowledge already been discovered by someone else? If they think your work is up to snuff, they will recommend that your manuscript be published as an article in that journal. But even then, they usually ask you to make changes to improve it. Most submissions don't get accepted. Anywhere from 30 to 90% of submissions end up in the reject pile. The most prestigious journals tend to have a higher rejection rate. And this whole process can happen within a few weeks. Or up to two years. Once the journal is published, it is sent to a library that subscribes to it. And it usually is a library because individual subscriptions are way too expensive. From the library, students and researchers can find out about this new knowledge and develop an idea for a research study of their own. So let's recap. Peer-reviewed articles are an integral part of how new knowledge is created and shared. Peer review can also happen here when applying for a grant, and here when planning a conference program. Conference papers are also published and made available through the library. By the way, like all established systems, the peer review process has its critics, and scholars continue to think about how the peer review process might be improved. If you need help finding peer-reviewed articles on your topic, 
Check out the library's article databases or ask a librarian.